today this is Sally Wood for Be Inspired and today I'm trying to inspire myself. I, uh, I rescued this poor chair from the side of the road and it is just standing next to it is making my, my face itch so it's hence me being in crappy duds. I don't want to ruin everything today. Um, it was obviously for an older person, it's got longer legs so it was to help them get in and out of the chair. And then a friend of mine popped over and said that he would actually rather like the chair as he's just moved into a, an apartment. So I will do my very best and um, we will discuss everything as I get to it and why it's done like that or what I've got to do to improve it. So number one is those legs are coming off and I'll find some new ones to put on. Here we go. From the front, you'll see what happens. I'm pushing the springs forward, and this actually straightens out. So if I do it all the way along, this will make it um, firm like it should be. What isn't quite so noticeable is when I push the springs up from the bottom, what actually happens with the, with the seat. But hopefully you can catch that on the film. As I say, once that's pushed into place, everything goes to where it should be. Okay, so I've turned the chair upside down, removed these corners, and I need to pull all of this back into place so that I can hopefully sew it. Trouble is, they're springs, so I'm going to actually put weight on everything to push them down the other way, hopefully straighten them out, and uh, we'll see what I can do. Now I'm using this needle, it was my grandmother's, so she's probably pleased to still use her stuff. And I'm using string, just normal string. I'm going to thread it up, you know, like you usually do. Having looked at this, I can see these stitches are coming apart here. And I think they did it as a chain stitch, so I'm going to actually go back to here and pop that down and through. I'm going to have to angle it because uh, I don't want it catching on everything. Getting into that corner is going to be a bit really nice. Anyway, I don't have a long piece because I don't want to have a problem. I'm going to put like a hitch in it. It's when you've got both ends together and you go round and poke the loop through the hole. Like that and it pulls tight it's not going to go anywhere but if you see here there's a hole and I'm going to put my th my needle through the hole to start that off like that and then I'm going to go about a centimeter or half an inch put my next stitch in and try and miss all the padding underneath and I've literally left a loop here to go through it's called blanket stitch and then I'm going to do the same along here about half an inch to a or a centimeter the reason I'm doing this this way is because I want to get both parts of the fabric I'm also going through the stitches so they shouldn't come undone from the original stitching I will be able to get all the way around. I will obviously have to get new pieces of uh, string. You can use um, nylon thread but then you've got nylon and um, natural threads mixing together and they don't always work. So I'll say I'm just going to slowly work my way around and uh, get this in. I've done hand stitching in upholstery for a very long time. can't remember when I last did it. I mean, you don't have to do it this way, but uh, you shouldn't throw a chair away just because it's got something really daft wrong with it. I've worked into this corner and I can't get the string wrapped underneath the spring. It has to come up through the top. So I'm going to use a pair of pliers. These ones are hooked, so hopefully they'll, they'll reach what I want to reach and I'm going to pull it up over the spring 
and then slide it back underneath here so that it's hopefully the right side of the spring. Yeah. So pull that and then I'm going to go I've got to go over here. Actually, I think what I'll do is I'll finish it off and I'll start a new piece here because I can't risk uh, getting these springs and strings mixed up, otherwise they will wear the string out. And if they do that, then the chair's going to just do what it's already done, which is collapse on itself. So I've done this section and now I'll go on to this section. I might be able to go from here, okay. Actually, I think I can stitch round the problem. Here we go. And then I will go under, through both pieces of fabric again, over the spring. If it's too short, just put the back of the needle through the loop. That's perfectly okay. And then I can start the blanket stitch again to the corner. Just make sure you've got both parts of the fabric. If you don't, then um, there's no point in trying to rescue anything. It is paramount that you get it all in together. Right, I'm going to show you the half hitch again. At least I think it's called a half hitch. Make a loop like that and then take the top round like that so you've got a, a circle and then you push the loop through your circle like that and pull tight. It's not going anywhere and then you've got your start for your next set of stitches. Now I've got around the corner. Yes, I've got a tie here. I'm not going to worry about it. Then with pulling all of this in here, the, the fabric has gone under here quite nicely. There is a spring there that is pressing against it, which is a bit irritating. What I'm going to do with this thread is I'm going to just run it across my new, where I've started from. I'm going to go underneath through all the fabric. To start off, put that through the loop here. Just need to wriggle around a little bit on the bits I need. Okay, so here's the, the original thread. I'm going to hold it like that and uh, wriggle that into place. Now I'm going to go back down through both parts of the fabric that I've refolded, missing the spring, keeping that down flat like that and sewing it in. Now when I get to the next part, this fabric here, I'll fold underneath and make sure I sew all the way through that too. Now I'm going to miss that spring. Just double check underneath that you have done so and carry on to the next end. Just work it out as you go. A bit like embroidery really. Surprising what, what you use for different projects without realising it. Okay, now that one's gone through the spring, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull it all the way through. Oh dear, what have I found? Okay, some threads I don't want. So those are the loose threads that were getting caught up. I'm going to pull it all the way through, if I can. Use pliers if you have to. I'm going to push it through with the pliers, I think. There we go. Oh, I see what it has got caught up on the padding underneath. Okay, so I've got it all the way through. I'm going to leave as much loop there as I can and see if I can come up the other side of the spring. Now, that might take a little bit of finagling because uh, the spring wants to be where it is and I can't see underneath I'm just having to feel underneath to see where everything is so there's the loop around the spring and that seems to be on there so okay I might on this one have to leave the spring where it is to catch a spring in the middle every now and again is not going to be a big problem you know this is an old chair it's kind of decided how it wants to be. I just won't pull that one too tight. And then I'll go on to the next one, which actually misses, I think misses the spring. I'll say it's really hard 
to, yeah, I think I can miss the spring on that one. Um, in which case, if, if I undo that stitch, I might be able to miss it on the one before. If I get the pliers and push down on the spring, actually, no, if I use my tack remover and wedge that between the spring and the wire, I might be able to, yeah, there we go, there. See, it's a bit like a surgeon here, using other tools to do the job. Just double check, yep, perfect. That has missed the spring, so might have to use that technique again. No, nope, I can lift it. Okay, so it's really hit and miss. Now, not much of that part has been caught under, so I've got to just make sure that the threads pull through, and then I'm going to stitch in here around the adjoining spring like this come up just the other side like that go down exactly next to it folding the fabric underneath make sure you go through both sets of fabric because that's where the strength is and come up because if you go through both sets you see it's, it's pulling this fabric forward but you can see I've actually gone through quite a bit of it, so I'm going to push that and start my next set of uh, stitches. And it will all eventually fold over, and as I get further along the chair, the next lot will go in properly as well. If you need to, just use your fingers to roll the fabric to where the stitch line was, and carry on going. Just use whatever means you can to get this in place, if this is the type of thing you've got to deal with less likely to fray again if that happens. As you can see I've managed to go all the way along here to this corner. I have the weight, I've moved all the weights around and it looks quite flat so I'm going to stitch these two here together so they don't move and then I'll just kind of loop stitch like they have on the other side to match and hopefully with the weight that I put over here, I'll be able to pull in this corner and carry on going down. Now I've got a couple of things to make sure happen. I'll confess this has been quite a workout. But I'm going to sew the um, springs together. And uh, I'm not going to do them in a really tidy way. I'm just doing them so they hold. So I just pop that through my half hitch because that's the easiest way to get that started. You can see a black line here. This line here actually has to go round the IELTS side of that of this metal frame. So this can be quite difficult for me to do because in order to do so this spring has to be, be moved far enough back for me to be able to pull that round. That's where I want it. I'm going to have to secure the spring where I want it. So I'm going to go in here and up, which actually gives it quite a bit of room, and do a, a billy do like that. I'll do the other side of the same spring, I think. Oh my goodness, this is so difficult. I think that's the other half, so I'm going to go down and hopefully up. Might, might help if the needles are facing the right way. And there again, it's going to be quite a big space there and then I can carry on down so I'll leave that and start sewing in the side here I should still be able to move the spring out of the way I'm thinking I'm going to have to undo some of the stitching on that side so in order to make sure these springs don't just pop back up I'm going to staple along here now the top of the springs are here the rounded parts and I want to keep those as flat as possible which is why I'm going to do it this way and as you can guess I'm not going to be able to use my web stretcher on this I can still fold the, fat, the web over like I usually do and then I'm going to just Pull it into this side just above where the springs are. I'm going to hold it with my hand there 
to give some tension and see if I can push it down and in. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. Quite a bit of tension it's not as as strong as I would like it but uh, this is very awkward to, to do so anyway I'm just gonna fold that back over like I usually do pop that into and seeing as I actually have some of the cross piece done I'm gonna pop that under there and over to the center here I'll take that piece over because I'll be using that in a minute I'm going to do the same here the top of the spring part is here and the, this one's here so I'm actually going to put it a little bit over so it actually straddles the two and the spring is held there so I'm just gonna pop it in as close as I can Fold that over so it's got a bit of strength there. And the same here, I'm going to just pull it as tight as I can and pop it down. And then fold that down again and staple it in place. Also going to put another one along here. I'll probably put four along here to be honest so that it straddles the joins. It's just for support so it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'll take that as low as I can again. Fold it down. Whoops. Again stretch it into this far corner here as tight as I can with my hands, which of course isn't very tight at all, but it should hold enough. It certainly won't sink like it had originally. Now again, fold that down. And hopefully I'll be able to pull that side in better with a little bit more support on it. And as you see, I've already started weaving the next one across I'll weave in as well. Hopefully with that little bit of pressure holding it I'll be able to uh, pull this into place a little bit better and secure it because it was starting to roll on me. The, as I say the black line here is meant to be right on the edge and I've been finding that a bit hard. As you see I've actually woven the webbing like I would do normally. There's a couple of rises here but I couldn't pull those in because of the way I had to do it. But this, along with the stitching of the original cover into place, I think that will last for maybe another 50 years. I'm sure this is about 50 years old, this chair. I wasn't sure if I'd shown you properly, but these springs here work like a camp bed. It's attached to the side of the chair and then onto the metal frame that runs in between where the springs are suspended to. They don't actually join the framework here, they're just suspended and then this piece of fabric was sewn over it. The other thing to remember is if this fabric has, has um, perished, you can do the same thing, just cut a fresh piece of fabric and sew it to where it needs to be sewn and it will work. Now along the front here you can see how smooth that's gone in and I've just got to pull this one in to make it a flat edge which it wasn't before so I'm really really pleased with that that's how your front border should be nice and straight I might pull in this side about half an inch quarter of an inch half an inch if I feel that the cushion doesn't sit properly on that thank you for joining me today I hope you've gained some insight on how to reattach springs if they're if they've just come loose if the fabric underneath has rotted, just try to cut an extra piece of about a similar size. I would leave the original in situ if you can, so you know how big, how tight to secure the fabric. 
and uh, use the same method of a blanket stitch to sew around the um, corners to secure it. This ended up being the first part of four films that I've had to produce on this chair. I hope I've covered everything um, regarding the, um, the reupholstery, which is the next film, um, the seat cushion, which is the third film, and the back cushion, which is the fourth film. So hopefully you can pick and choose which bits you need. And I am hoping that I've actually put all the information you need on it. Please subscribe if you want to hear more from me and hit the bell button. And in the meantime, take care. See you later. Ciao.